Hi folks, welcome back. This is Coffee Arts once more. I want to show you some more precise details about my mod Crunch My Party now. I hope you've seen my first video in which I demonstrated the more fun aspects of it so that you know that what, what it basically does. Tonight I want to show you how to use it in detail. Okay, what do we want to do? You can see our three little goblins here that we already know, called Bulk, Shrek and Lutzni. Now we want to define those three as one party. Then we want to toggle them from exploded to crunched and from crunched back to exploded. And then, last but not least, we want to be able to find them, to refind them in the scene wherever they might be. And these are basically the three major functions of the module, called grouping, toggling and finding. Each of them having their own predefined macro buttons. But where do these macros come from? Well, it's quite easy. There's a compendium packaged into my mod. You can find it here under macros. It is called Crunch My Party Macros. Just click on it and you will see all those macros that you can use in whatever way you like. You see the three major groups here. There are macros for finding, for grouping and for toggling. Each of them having five instances reflecting the maximum number of five parties that you can manage separately. Well, let's also have a quick insight into those macros. They are very, very easy to comprehend. There is a class called Party Cruncher, which is exposed so that you can use it here. And this class in turn exposes the major functions called Group Party for grouping, naturally, Toggle Party for toggling, and you might already have guessed it, the third function is called find party. The digit 1 as a parameter here being the index of the party we want to use. And we are going to use party index 1 throughout this video. Let's have another look at the game settings here. There's a special note called crunch my party. Just ignore those basic parameters here on top. We will jump right down to the key section which is here. We have two parameters for each party a list of members and a party name. This is repeated for every party, party 2, party 3, party 4 and party 5. So you might have noticed from the glimpse of your eye that there are already values present here because I've, I have predefined something just for demonstration, but I am going to delete it from here. Why? I want to show you that whatever you are uh, whatever you're defining with the macro buttons can also be edited here in plain text. But usually that isn't, that isn't necessary, so we want to skip that here. I will empty those fields and save, so that we are in a basic clear state to start with. So right now there's no definition at all present for the module. If you would hit any macro button now, nothing would happen except for errors. So, how does the toggling work? You might already have seen in the first video that you have to select your party members, but stop, there is something we have forgotten. Before defining a party, we need to tell the module what the party token will be that is meant to represent those members. So we have to add a token to the scene. I have predefined one with a nice little image of those three goblins. We call it Bulk's Gang of Three. So, what is special about this token? Well, honestly, nothing. It's just some arbitrary character actor here. You can just ignore all those attributes, they're completely irrelevant. The key part is that I have an image representing my characters and, the most important thing, a name that has to be unique across the scene. And um, technically speaking, it's not that name here that is relevant, but it's the name given in the token configuration. Always be aware to use this value here. In my case, I always take special care to use the same name in both places. But if you're in doubt, always refer to the token name in the token configuration. We have to remember this now, so I'm going to press Ctrl C to keep it in my buffer for later. Ctrl C. And that's it. Don't have to save anything here. It's already set in the correct way. Now, the next thing to know is 
always remember to disable the party token. Why is that? It is because the module interprets the state of this token to detect what's the state of the party. If it is disabled, it thinks, okay, the party is exploded right now, I have to crunch it. If it was enabled, it would be vice versa. Okay, if once you have disabled it, move it out of the way somewhere. You can move it wherever you like, you can move it here, you can move it there. It doesn't matter, because it's disabled. And apart from that, in the player's view, it is not visible at all. We are in the game master's view here. Okay, we are ready to go. Now, finally, we can select our party members. And then, now we are going to smash the button. And what we need is the button called Group Party. What happens? Now it asks us, what's the name of the party token that shall represent these selected members? This name must exist with th this exact name in current scene. So we just press Ctrl V, enter our name here and save. And now you see our party has been assigned with these exact three members. And that's it. Basically, all we have to do now is smash the toggle button. Just have another, another look at the code. What we're invoking now is the function called toggle party for party number one. And what happens? All right, this is what we expected. Now we have one single token for Bulk's gang of three. And it is already active, so you can just use your keyboard keys, arrow keys to move it and do whatever with it you like. But hey, where have the member tokens gone? For that we have to scroll all the way up to the top left corner of our scene. And there you might spot them. Here they are. Can you see them? Latsny? It's Latsny, really. And he's on top of the other two, Shrek and Bulk. They have been rendered invisible and moved out of the way to this hiding spot on the top left. If you don't believe me, you can just enable them here to see them in very clearly, but you should never do that in game because the state, the invisible state here is important for my mod. Just leave them as they are. You can move them, it doesn't break the mod, but I think it's best practice just to leave them here and forget about them because the mod will later fetch them back when you are exploding your party once more. Okay, how do we get back to our party? That is what the find party function is for. If you've lost track of where the original token is located in the scene, just press find party one. And here we are back again. Got it? All right. Now you're free to play with your group token, your party token. Once you want to have your separate members back, just hit the toggle button again. And here they are. And Vice versa, where has the party token gone? You might have guessed it. Just scroll back to the top left of your scene and here it is. Just like the member tokens before, it has now been pushed invisibly, invisibly to the hiding spot. And there it is waiting for to be reactivated by your call. Press find party again and here you're back in the center of your scene ready to play. Well, okay, what's next? Let's have a look at the game settings once more, just to see what has happened there. Oh yes, can you see it? The settings that we deleted earlier are just back. They have been stored here again, because the module takes the list of all the names relevant to your party and puts them here as a comma-separated list. Well, you might go say, okay, I have another token here, let's call it Carl. There's a goblin called Carl and I want to add it to my party. Just type your name here, it doesn't matter if it's lowercase or uppercase, it will be stored in lowercase anyway. So, uh, let's, uh, let's just name him Knarl. I think Knarl is a better name for a goblin. Okay. Do we have a goblin token called Knarl in the scene? No, we haven't. So what would happen if you would smash the toggle button now? Let's try. Oh, there's an arrow. An arrow saying tokens missing in scene. Knarl. Oh, this was, that was quite quick. Let's do it again. Tokens missing in scene. Knarl. And that is absolutely correct. The module realizes you want to have a token in your party, but it doesn't exist. So, let's remove the Gnarl, we don't need him. And 
now the toggling should work fine again. The other way is just to redesign your party. Select your members once more. Don't choose the party token name, click save again and then the valid list of only those three goblins will once more be stored in here. And now the toggling is working fine again. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? Okay, there's one more detail I should mention here, and this is that um, you don't, you, you must not use token names that contain a comma, because I guess it's self-explaining. The comma is used as the delimiter here. So, uh, an, a title name like Knall the Great would definitely not work, because the module will interpret this as two separate names which wouldn't exist in your scene. So bear in mind, do not use commas as names for your tokens. Maybe this will be supported in a later version of the mod. And, by the way, don't try this. <laughs> it won't work. Okay, but let's, let's get rid of Knall the Great once more. We don't need him. Let's continue with our video because there are two more aspects I want to show you. The first one is, how about controlling where the party token should spawn on toggling? Well, even that's quite easy. Imagine that our goblins want to go there on top of that big barrel. They like barrels, you know that by now. Okay, how does it work? Let's imagine that Bulk, as the chief, is standing on top of the barrel and that his two companions are somewhere scattered across the room. Well, uh, he's, he's trying, he's trying to stand in the middle of the barrel. Just let's get rid of the grid here for a moment, then it will be much easier. Okay, so, Bulk is standing there, there and calling out to his companions, Come on, join me! Let's get on top of that barrel all together! Will this work? Let's try. Okay, worked very smoothly. How's that? Let's just explode for a moment. Ah, you see, by, by the way, just one other thing, that these goblins on spawning, on exploding, on swarming out, they did not cross the wall. So you can be assured of that, the mod takes care of that. Whenever they swarm, spread out, they will respect walls. So that's the reason why they might be stacked on top of each other when they are exploded in very narrow spaces. Just don't wonder about that. This is just to make sure that they do not cross walls. So, now, Bulk has been selected as the only member of his party before I smashed, before I pressed the toggle button. And that's the reason why the party token has spawned in that exact place. Whenever you want to find control where the party token should appear, make sure to select only one member prior to toggling so that this one member defines the target position. Very easy. If you would select all of them or none of them, the spawn position would be quite random, because then it is defined by the technical order in which the tokens are stored in the background. That's um, technical detail, don't need to explain it. The best practice is to select one member of your party before crunching them, so that you will always know where the party token will be located. Okay. Now, one last thing. You may remember the fun part in my first video about that big empty barrel in which the goblins were hiding. How did I do that? Very easy. It's just about what I've explained so far. It's just about defining the party once more with the group button, but this time using the token of the barrel as the party token. So we just need to put in another name here of a token that exists in the scene. All right, and you might know, you might have expected that I've already prepared the empty barrel for you. Here it is. Let's put it into our scene. Uh, let's give it a little bit more volume so that it's a little bit more impressive. A very big barrel for the goblins. Let's place it over there. Let's get the name, the correct name, which will be used as the party token name. 
open token configurations. Control C, the name given there, to remember it. Now, select your party members. Ah, no! Ha! Don't forget to disable the group token. Then, select your party members, hit the group button, and Control V to enter the new party token name. Click Save, and here we are. Our party is now defined as the members of the big empty barrel. If we hit Toggle now, what will happen? The rum barrel will jump to the position of the members. None were selected, so it just randomly chooses one of the members to spawn upon. That's not exactly what we wanted, so we will have to remember to place one token at the desired target position, keep it selected, toggle and then here you are. It's not absolutely pre precise due to the game, basic game mechanisms, grid mechanisms, but I guess one can live with that, you can always fine tune afterwards. So that is the deep secret of the rum barrel. Nothing special, as you can see, very easy to handle. Just for completeness, let's have another look at the module settings. To see what has happened here, the big empty barrel as a token name has been stored here inside the party name parameter. This is what we expected. All right. What's left to do now is just have fun with grouping and toggling and playing. So, that's it. I hope that this video has given you a decent impression about what my mod does, how, is it you, how, to, how to use it. Just remember that you can find the GitHub project link here in the teaser. Visit the project here, feel free to comment, feel free to post issues, feel free to contribute. I'm looking forward very much to hearing from folks out there how my module is working out for them and what can be improved in the future. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.